Hello Thrivers, here we are with day three of our 14 day path to get my spouse back challenge. I want to know how you're doing. Um, I've seen a lot of you commenting here in the group and sharing your wins and the things that you're learning, some of the aha moments that you've had. So I just wanna say a huge high thrive to everyone that's doing this challenge. And I know that it's really jumpstarting our momentum as we get into our brand new and improved path coaching program that we're sharing with you next week. And so this is to jumpstart our results and make sure that we are doing the things that we need to do and the things that we can control is what I'm going to share today so that we can successfully get our spouse back to us and have the relationship that we really want to have. And today it's all about focusing on what I can control. After having worked with thousands of couples around the world, I have seen absolute miracles happen and lives transform and families healed and hearts healed and people just become their uttermost best self and that's incredible. But it's really sad to me because the majority of the people that come our way don't apply the things that we talk about and they stay stuck in victimhood. And I have seen this mindset of I am a victim, I can't control my circumstances, and focusing so much on everything that they don't want completely destroy their lives. And this isn't just in relationships, I've also seen it in health, in finances, and in many people. I'm sure you can, you've seen the same thing, right? People that are absolutely victims to circumstances and they only talk about all the negative things and everything that they don't want and those same things keep happening in their lives. If you look at year after year after year after year, the kind of patterns that they get into. Um, and so where anxiety comes from, where fear comes from and hopelessness comes from is most people are focusing 90% of the time on things that they have no control over. If we're focusing on things we have no control over, of course, we're going to be in a state of anxiety. We're going to feel hopeless. We're going to feel helpless. We're going to feel like a victim. And it's going to rob us of our energy. It's going to strip us of our power and our focus and our ability to achieve the things that we want to achieve. And so what we need to do, what Stoic philosophy says, is that be aware of the things that you can't control, but don't dwell there. Focus on the things that we can control. And so I always encourage our clients and I encourage all of us to shift our focus from focusing 90% on the things that we cannot control to 90% of the time we're focusing on things that we can control. We're aware of the other 10%. We're not ignorant and like we're not running around like Pollyanna blind to life and the challenges and the problems out there, but we shift our focus to what we can control. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Anne. Good to see you. And so that is where we find our, our peace and our power. And for me, I learned this lesson when my life was on the line, literally like my life was on the line. I was fighting aggressive breast cancer while I was pregnant. And I learned <laughs> through that really hard experience that it was easy. It was instinctual even to fall into fear and into worry. And every time I was thinking about the things that I could not control, that is when the darkest moments were. And that's when the anxiety rose and the helplessness rose and I felt like a victim. Why did this happen to me? What did I do wrong, right? Why, why is everyone else healthy and well at the age of 29 with their families and I'm here getting chemotherapy while pregnant, right? And all these different things. And I realized that once I learned how to shift my focus to what I could control and practiced gratitude even and the learning lessons from the challenges that were before me that's where i found my power that's where i found my peace my serenity even the ability to you know you could call it let go and let god but it's saying i'm okay actually no matter what happens and so trying to let go of the need to control circumstances that i couldn't control is where i found my peace and then taking action on the areas where I know I can control. The truth is we don't always have a say in what happens to us. There are challenges, there's things that happen to us, but we always have 100% control about how we think about it, how we feel, and what we do. Those are the things that are 100% in our control. And so for me, I had to shift it like, yeah, this is really hard, and I, 
I don't want this, <laughs> but nevertheless, it's before us. And so I would practice gratitude daily to shift my focus on what I could control and to shift my focus on the things I could actually even appreciate in the moment. And that shifts us out of the language of victimese, um, as Brian Johnson, yeah, that's his name, Brian Johnson calls it, into the language of ownish, where we own our circumstances, and we can even find the good things in them. I could celebrate the benefits of modern medicine and the incredible ability that I had to find one of the best experts in the world to help young women with cancer. And that for her, this was just another Tuesday, I've shared that, right? She's like, for me, it's just another Tuesday, and that she was so experienced you know, experience and had so much knowledge and expertise in what she was doing that she could help guide me. Um, I could find gratitude in the ability that my husband had to be able to take off work and support us, right? Not support sort of financially, <laughs> we couldn't do that at the time, um, but to be there and support me and the children while we went through that and, and have him there with me so that I didn't feel so alone. I had my very best friend and my rock with me. And I could be grateful for all the people that came and helped us with our children that came and helped clean my house and offered so much kindness and taught me more about the goodness of humanity than any other experience ever had in my life. That I could be open to being the recipient of that kind of love and generosity and kindness. And that for the first time I had the ability to humble myself and very independent and I could even be grateful. I'm grateful for these experiences that are teaching me to be humble and accept help now instead of trying to think that I need to do it all myself. I recognized that was a learning lesson that I needed to have was that I didn't always have to be the one out serving and helping everyone else. But this was a time when I could allow others to help me and that I could find peace in that and I could accept that. And I recognized in that lesson that the more I'm able to receive from others, then the more I'm also able to give. And so it actually makes me an even better giver when I can be a good receiver. So those are the things I can see now as I look back five years ago on that experience and how fundamental the difference was between the times when I chose to give into fear, when I chose to focus on the things I could not control, you know, whether I was going to make it, whether my baby was going to make it, why this happened to me versus the times when I said, you know, I can't control everything, but here's what I can control. I can decide to look at the good in this. I can decide to learn from this. I can decide that maybe I haven't had it all together up until this point, and there are lessons and things that I can improve on in this situation. So that's what I would encourage you to do as well. Your challenge today, let me focus uh, over here on it. <laughs> uh, so your challenge today is I want you to first write down what you can control and what you cannot. So even on like a sheet of paper, my daughter scribbled on this, so there we go. That's fine. First one I could find. <laughs> you just write down, like divide the paper in half, minus the scribbles. Here's what I can control. Other side, here's what I cannot control. I can control. I can control how I think about this. I can control if I choose to be grateful for this, I can control the words that are coming out of my mouth. I can control the kind of help that I get for this. I can control getting support for this. I can control helping other people through the similar challenge. I can be a support and an example to them. I can help other people. I can actually ease my own pain, my own frustration by helping other people with their circumstances. And I'll realize maybe mine aren't so bad either. I can control that. I control what I eat. I control how I sleep. I control my mindset habits. I control my own energy. I control, you know, and you just keep going. These are the things I can control, right? I control that I'm going to learn some new skills today. I control that I'm going to reach out to this person for help. I can control, and you just keep going. Here's what I can't control. I can't control my spouse. I can't control what they're going to do. I can't control their decision to have a divorce. I can't control their decision to be with someone else. These are the things I cannot control. I cannot control acts of God. I cannot control natural disasters. I cannot control the economy. I cannot control the government. I cannot control, you know, anything that you've been obsessed about or worrying about that you do not have control over, pay attention to that. Second part, recognize where you have been giving your focus check in right now. Even, you know, this morning or the last hour before I watched this, 
where were most of my thoughts dominated? Were they, was I thinking about things I cannot control? The things that I don't want, the things that I'm worried about, the things that are hurting me and causing me pain? Am I thinking about those things? What percentage am I thinking about those things? Versus what percentage of the time am I thinking about the things I can control? The things I'm grateful for, the actions I can take to improve the situation, the actions I can take to improve myself. Am I thinking about those things? And start to make the shift of catching yourself when you're going down that roll, you know, down that road, and you say, okay, here I am, I'm going again. My mind's got these, you know, these highways that they keep trying to go down. And here I go again, obsessing and thinking about things I don't want and things I can't control. Stop, pattern interrupt, what can I control here? One of the most powerful mindset practices that I do personally every single day is anytime I feel a level of anxiety or of just anything that feels out of alignment, any kind of negative energy, I always stop. I take a deep breath, sometimes a couple deep breaths <laughs> to slow myself down and to pattern interrupt whatever bad road I decided I was going to go down or even... I wasn't even consciously aware that I was going down. And all of a sudden I'm realizing, wow, I really don't feel good right now. What's going on? So I take those deep breaths and then I ask myself, what would the best version of myself do right now? And if you don't know who the best version of yourself is, then journal that. This is a bonus to our challenge today. <laughs> who is the best version of you? Leah, Timothy, Denise, Brittany, Joe. Hey, Joe, we, Brianna. Who is the best version of you, right? I see all of you. Yeah, Brittany, Martin, DJ. Who is the best version of you? How do they think? What kind of thoughts do they have? What kind of emotions do they feel? What kind of habits do they have? What kind of actions do they take? How do they speak to others? How do they seek to understand others? How do they set healthy boundaries, right? How do they get help? How do they get support? What's the best version of myself? What would they do right now? And I almost ask that version of myself as if it was someone right in front of me, like best version of Heather, what would you do right now? And then I just listen and something always comes and inspiration always comes. And I feel like it's inspiration from a divine source. And in my belief, I believe it's from God. And I believe that he's saying the best version of you would apologize right now. The best version of you would relax about this. The best version of you would go take a walk. The best version of you would respond with love. The best version of you would, you know, go meditate for a few minutes so that you can change your state. The best version of you would do this. And then I act, I follow through on whatever the inspiration was. And I do that repeatedly throughout the day. Even this week with school starting and there's a lot of anxiety. I know it's a really stressful time for a lot of parents with school starting and for kids. Uh, th there's things that we couldn't control. We moved to this house so that my son could go to a specific middle school that's way better than all the others and all of his friends are going to. And we just found out two days ago that he can't go there because they just changed the boundaries. Like, it's crazy the week before school. And so now there's things outside of our control. We thought that we could move things in a specific direction, and now there's things that we can't control. So we have to take look at that. What can I control? What can I not? I cannot control the fact that he doesn't get to go there anymore, but I can control how I think about it and how I communicate with him about it and I'm helping him to understand, you know what? It could lead to something even better, right? And there's probably something that we don't understand that's going on and that's okay. We can allow that to be and see how it unfolds. And that gives us peace. It gives us power and we take action on those things to move us in the direction that we want. All right. So the final thing <laughs> is to determine to shift your focus 90% to the things that you can control. If you do this, you will be one of the rare, I will say 5% of the people that truly transform their lives and truly live as the best version of themselves. Most people are going to stay stuck as a victim. Most people are gonna say, my spouse is leaving me, it's, there's nothing I can do, it's the end of the world, and they're gonna focus everything out there on the pain, and everything is gonna be a victim, and they're going to leave the situation with scars that most likely many of them are never gonna heal, heal, and they're going to lead into another relationship that's going to end the same way. I'm not trying to be a pessimist, <laughs> but I am trying to say that our minds are so powerful. 
we have to decide that we're going to steer the ship. And being a victim is only going to perpetuate further pain and victimhood. It will never lead to healing and happiness. It just won't. I can't say it any other way. If I did, it would be a disservice to you. And so choose now that you're not going to be a victim to anyone or anything anymore. And if you have been, know that it's not too late. You can learn some new ways. And that as you do, that's when you find your peace, that's when you find your power, and that's when you find the ability to be a creator of your life and have the relationship that you really want. So go and do that challenge today. Let me know in the group how it went for you, what you're learning, and what you're committed to doing now. And we will see you soon.